New expert information has revealed the cost of solar, wind, and battery storage is three to five times lower than nuclear energy. That is alarming. When we consider the fact that at COP28, 20 countries committed to do something which is extremely worrying and it is actually extremely concerning because it could slow down generation because it could slow down deployment of renewable energy worldwide. At COP28, more than 20 countries worldwide pledged to triple nuclear energy use. In other words, they are going to build literally hundreds of nuclear power reactors. Does this make sense? Is, is this a good decision? Is this a good use of billions and billions? In fact, hundreds of billions of dollars. Well, an Australian government agency called the CSIRO says no. In fact, based on their numbers, this is actually pretty damn stupid. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Great to see you. Happy Christmas. I hope you had an amazing year. The CSIRO says wind and solar power are much cheaper than nuclear, even with added integration costs. What does this mean? Well, the CSIRO has published the latest edition of its important gen cost report. Well, they really look into the numbers here. They look at the data. What do things really cost in the real world? Not what are you hearing on YouTube? Not what are people telling you? Not what is the news media reporting? But what's the actual truth behind the numbers? Reneweconomy.com.au says they have responded to critics by dialing in near-term integration costs for wind, solar, and battery storage. The result is the same. Renewables are clearly the cheapest energy option and the story for nuclear just got much, much worse. Now, this report is based on Australia, but yeah, I mean, 90% of the world lives on the Sun Belt, 90% of the world's population. So this report is applicable to 90% of the world. That pretty much tells us all we need to know. The annual cost report prepared in collaboration with the Australian energy market operator since 2018 is an important guide to where the energy transition is at and where it should be heading. But over the past, it has become the target of attack from conservative naysayers, the pro-nuclear lobby, and people who just think that the future of the world is nuclear. Now, could it be? Well, it's possible the future of the world could be uh, free, limitless energy. Eventually that could happen. But that is not today's nuclear reactors, which are not actually using fission to create limitless energy. This is a very different thing. And I've talked about that in other videos on the channel recently. The CSRO has defended its methodology, but to satisfy the critics, it has added in pre-2030 integration costs, including new transmission lines being built to connect new generation renewable energy and it has found that the story is simply the same it doesn't really matter how you look at this it doesn't really matter what state you're in it doesn't matter if you're in america the results will be the same while this change leads to higher cost estimates variable renewables wind and solar are still found to have the lowest cost range of any new build technology said the csro saying that in this includes all integration costs up to and including 90% renewables. In the past year, the cost of solar and offshore wind has declined significantly, especially solar. Solar panel prices are now around about 37% lower than they were at the same time last year. The cost of battery storage has declined as well. And the cost of other technologies like onshore wind and pump hydro has actually increased. The big mover and one that is significant in the context of the debate on the energy transition is the insistence of some politicians and some uh, pro-nuclear activists that nuclear is the answer and the cost of nuclear and small modular reactors unfortunately is a big problem here. And the, the problem here is this, the numbers you're seeing of the cost of nuclear reactors are always incorrect. 
The cost quoted by companies to build these small modular nuclear reactors is never, it's never right. And the numbers, unfortunately, therefore, are skewed as a result. Companies say it's going to cost, uh, say, if, for example, $1 billion to build X small nuclear reactor. The cost almost always doubles. The time frame to install that reactor, to build it, almost always doubles. But the same cannot be said for wind, solar, and battery storage. The Sierra CRO has been attacked by the pro-nuclear lobby, including conservative media and think tanks, for what the lobby claims are inflated cost estimates. But the Sierra CRO, which uh, realistically is fairly objective with its numbers, it doesn't really have any um, reason to try to lie to anyone, doesn't have any connections to funding groups. It really is very, very objective. It says that recent events have backed its numbers. In fact, they make clear that the nuclear SMR costs are worse than thought. And a lot of this is spread, probably a misinformation campaign, by certain sectors of the media. CSIRO economist Paul Graham points to the collapse of a major deal this year involving the most advanced SMR projects in the United States, the new scale projects in Utah, which were withdrawn because of soaring costs, costs that just were just out of control and way different to what the original quotes were. Graham says this is significant because as new scale was listed and had to abide by strict regulatory disclosure rules, it had to be honest about the anticipated costs of its nuclear build. And these were nearly double what was previously quoted. In fact, they end up at the equivalent of Australian $31,000 per megawatt according to NewScale's findings, and much higher than the original cost of $19,000 per megawatt, what estimated by the CSIRO in its previous report, for which it was in accused of inflating. So the CSIRO has given, in its 22 report, right, it was in accused by pro-nuclear lobbyists of inflating the costs of 13, about 12000 US dollars per megawatt, and actually the costs as disclosed by New Scale, ended up being 21,000. So basically, it was accused by nuclear lobbyists of exaggerating, but it understated the costs of nuclear energy by 50%. Amazing. The UAMPS or Utah Utility Estimate Implies Nuclear SMR has been hit by a 70% cost increase which is much larger than the average 20% observed in other technologies, the CSIRO writes. The cancellation of this project is very significant globally because it was the only SMR project in the US that had received design certification from the Nuclear Regulator Commission, which is an essential step before construction can actually commence, said Graham. And he believes that all other claims on nuclear SMR costs are marketing and sales talk from companies. They're not real. They're just sort of stuff intended to get you to click and be intrigued and to hopefully get governments to invest in this technology and then realize later on, ah, this isn't what we thought it would be. The reality is that talk of nuclear SMRs as a solution for the energy transition, particularly in Australia, and near-term emissions targets are simply a distraction. They're simply slowing down the world from moving to renewable energy, to, to, to moving to net zero, given that SMR technology is simply not available and unlikely to be so for two decades. The CSR report says some interesting things about the cost of wind and solar, technologies which are available and do work right now, today. It says the cost of these technologies will continue to fall in coming years after various price shocks that have affected the technologies over the last couple of years. And it's right, over the past 12 months, the price of solar and battery storage has declined enormously. By including the cost of transmission and storage that is underway now and committed out to 2030, it has actually doubled the price in its estimates. So this report is saying, even if we double the realistic price that the world will be paying for solar, wind and battery storage, actually it's still significantly cheaper than nuclear. It notes that integration costs to make high shares of renewable rel renewables reliable are estimated at $34 per megawatt hour to $41 per megawatt hour in 2023 and $25 to $34 in 2030. It also says this, 
for coal and gas to achieve their price targets. The only way they can do this is to have at more demand than they have today. And what's happening? Well, the demand for coal and gas is going down. So because of this, it means that the existing generators for coal and gas in most countries worldwide, they're simply inefficient. They have to run at a minimum 70% of demand. And because they're not hitting that target, most of them are losing money and costing significantly more than we are being kind of led to believe. Here in Australia, the Federal Energy Minister, Chris Bowen, says the report is proof that the government's policies are on the right track. And the coalition is pursuing a dangerous fantasy. In other words, the other side of our government here in Australia is pursuing a dangerous fantasy of nuclear by urging the stop to cheap and reliable renewables and a commitment to nuclear, which I agree would be crazy. The opposition has engaged in some inappropriate and improper attacks on CSIRO and AEMO, the Australian Energy Organization, in recent months and has questioned Jen Cost, Bowen told journalists. Jen Cost is independently prepared and and it has nothing to do with the government, by the experts, by the scientists and economists, taking into account consultation all around the world. He went on to say, this report takes into account all the costs that go with renewable energy between 2024 and 2030, including transmission and storage. And it still finds that renewable energy is by far the cheapest form of energy. And even if nuclear energy costs were to fall from 2030 onwards, nuclear energy will be at least three to five times more expensive than renewable energy. So that gives you a really good picture here of the reality we're facing. The reality we're facing is this, like he said, even if nuclear costs were to come down significantly, which they're unlikely to do so, let's be realistic, is still three to five times more expensive than batteries, solar, and wind. If we consider the facts here, guys, that 20 countries are committing to triple their nuclear energy use uh, by 2030, this seems to be a huge waste of money. And not only that, but it's, it's taking money that could be used to advance renewables, to make more solar farms, wind farms, and battery storage, to essentially move the world away from fossil fuels. And instead of investing in that, it's investing it into nuclear, which is said to cost three to five times more than wind, solar, and batteries, even if the price of nuclear was to fall significantly, which is really not that likely. 